Okay, here we go once again, continuing onward with Section 1, Plan and Configure a Microsoft Teams Environment, and we dive into Module number 4, Configure and Manage Guest Access. Now, it's important to note that as we go in and leverage how to manage guest access as it pertains to Microsoft Teams, most of what we're doing is going to be managed directly through the Teams Admin Center, as you can see in the screenshot here. This allows us to manage things like calling settings around making private calls and things like that. Now, if you recall or if you've taken the MS-100 course or if you've studied for the MS-100 examination, there's a lot of information in there around identity and access management. And setting external collaboration settings in Azure AD, which we'll kind of showcase here in just a moment when we do our demonstration, a lot of that is centrally managed at the tenant level with regards to how we allow guests into the tenancy, into the cloud, and into our organization, and how we want to manage them in M365. That then allows us to propagate those capabilities and those guests into different groups and services like SharePoint and M365 services like Exchange and so on, it to include Teams. Teams owners can then invite those guests, add them into the existing teams, and things like that. So pretty straightforward process in terms of how we would go about managing them. But beyond that, all of the other capabilities that most standard members have within the team, we would allow the guests to make calls, as I mentioned earlier, allow them to do any kind of video or content sharing or meet now from a meeting standpoint, allow them to communicate through messaging capabilities, right? Edit, delete, chat, using GIFs, memes, stickers, all of the fun collaborative capabilities from a messaging standpoint can then be controlled and regulated for what guests can and can't do within a Microsoft team. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Teams owners can invite those new guests into the existing directory, into the existing teams through the Teams Admin Center. Now, as we go about configuring those guest permissions for a team, we talked about this earlier, managed at the individual team level. Now, in order for us to do this, you do have to be the team's owner or carry the ownership role within that team. When you go into the team settings, you'll actually see a box that looks very similar to this, where you'll see guest permissions and allow the guests to do certain functions within the teams, like create a channel. Now, if you have any doubts on any of the guest access management capabilities within Teams and M365 services, there's a really good checklist out there. You can click the link below this video to learn more. It's about six or seven steps. Of course, if we want to go about removing a guest, now guests can be removed directly through the team itself or through the team's admin center. Much like any other capability of removing and deleting things from a team, you do have to be the team's owner, team service administrator, or global administrator in M365 in order for you to do this. And simply removing from the team does not remove the account. Because remember, you're just removing them from the ability to access content. You're not removing them from being able to log in or interact with the tenancy. So if you're going to remove the account, make sure you go back into the admin center or back into Azure AD and make sure you remove the guest account at those levels so that it applies at the wider area across the entire tenancy. And for our first demonstration, let's dive into the enablement and management of guest access across Microsoft Teams. All right, so you can see here, I'm in the Azure portal, and I just wanted to start this demonstration off just really quickly, kind of recapping if you don't recall or haven't taken the MS-100. If I go into Azure AD and I go into Users, and then under User Settings, there's going to be a link down here towards the bottom for external users where I am then allowed to manage external collaboration settings. This is where I'm going to specify guest user permissions and their limitations, whether admins and users in the guest inviter role can invite additional guests, members can invite, guests can invite, and so on. This is a global setting at the tenant level for users within the environment. And then once I've defined that, then I can go into my users and actually go about creating a guest user or inviting a guest user into the organization 
So as you can see here, I already have a guest account created through an MSA or a Microsoft account just for the purpose of this demonstration. Now I'm going to switch back over to Teams Admin Center into the main dashboard as you can see here. Under org-wide settings, there's going to be a setting here for guest access. And it's a simple toggle on or off switch to allow guest access in Teams. When I toggle that on, then you're going to see those calling, meeting, and messaging policy settings that are going to allow me to set this at the organizational level with regards to what guests can do or cannot do in Microsoft Teams. Since I don't have voice, I'll turn private calls off. Maybe I allow the ability to do video. Maybe not do meet now. I say I want to reserve that for specific employees or organizational members. And then beyond messaging, pretty straightforward toggle on and off switch with regards to what we can do. Edit sent messages. Maybe I want to turn that off. Maybe I don't want them the ability to delete, but I still want them to use chat and leverage GIF and things like that. And then beyond that, I will simply save it and then go from there. Now, that just allows me to create the ability, to allow the ability to have those guests in. All right, so as I've managed my guest access and I've gone through my checklist, which if you haven't taken a look at the checklist, it's a pretty straightforward process on the document library on Microsoft's website. Again, six steps, I believe. It goes through all of the different motions on setting up the guest access from Azure AD to SharePoint and so on making sure all of those are completed before you can proceed forward. So as you can see, I'm in the Teams client. I'm in one of the teams that I manage. I can simply then go into Manage Teams. And as you can see here, I already have a guest that's accessed and good to go within this particular team. If I want that guest to be able to have any additional permissions as we went through in the previous slides, I can then allow guests to create and update channels or allow guests to delete channels and then go from there. And if I want to remove the guest access, it's just as easy. I could just go back into my Teams client, go in and simply hit the X just like I would any other member and remove them that way. And it's that simple. All right, a really quick and simple demonstration on the guest access. Now, let's dive into another element of guest access, and that's around Azure AD access reviews for those guests. Now, access reviews are a fairly newer feature within Azure AD, so you may or may not see it a whole lot on your exam, but I still recommend you prep for it because I think I encountered maybe one or two questions around access reviews. The one thing I will start off with as a pro tip, you may encounter a question around the licensing. There is a licensing prerequisite for access reviews. You have to have Azure Active Directory Premium P2 licensing in order to even leverage this. There are some permissions requirements as well. You have to be a global administrator or a user administrator to conduct access reviews for guests inside of Azure AD. And then, of course, performing the access reviews themselves. Here's where you can do things like ask the individual guests themselves to review their own membership. Ask group sponsors or other delegates to review guest memberships. Ask the guests as well to review application access or those same delegate and sponsors to review guest app access. And then ask the guests to review their need for access. The idea of the access review is to really create a process that says, hey, you've had guest access to a resource within our environment for a while. Do you still need it? Right? It's kind of a reminder or an alarm clock that goes off. It says, you probably need to take a look at this. Do you still need it? If not, and you don't respond, we're going to let it go. We'll talk about this in the demonstration here in just a moment. As an exam pro tip, you might encounter a scenario around possibly needing to remove inactive or not active users from a group or team within a period of time, like say per month, per quarter, per year, et cetera. And in that scenario, if the answer option is going to be access reviews in Azure AD Admin Center, that's likely going to be your answer. If you want to learn more about access reviews within Azure AD, click the links below this video to learn more. And with that, let's dive into our second and last demonstration of the module, which is going to be a quick overview on Azure AD access reviews.
All right, so here we are. We're in our Azure portal. And for this one, we're going to go a little bit different. We're actually going to go into the identity governance section within the Azure portal. And we're going to dive into the create and access review. When we go in here, pretty straightforward wizard here. We're going to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to call this inactive users and then give it a description, something like inactive users if I can spell over a period of, let's say, 90 days, just for the purpose of this demo. We'll set the start date for today. We'll do a quarterly, 90 days roughly, quarterly, and then we will end this review by another point in time. Now, what we would want to do is we could either do a users to review based on everyone or guest users. Now, since we're talking about guest users, we're going to leave that button alone and we're going to review members of a group or we can review members assigned to an application. If we use assigned to an application, you will select an application based on the wizard option there. If I go members of a group, I'm going to select members of a group. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I actually created a security group called guest users and I populated the one guest user that I have within my tenant here and I selected it. And then I'm going to select link to program. There's a default program option. You'll just leave that there alone and that'll make sure that you can apply the settings appropriately. Now, the last two bits within this wizard, the first one is going to be upon completion settings and the auto apply results to resource. Now, this is where we can take that activity to either remove, approve, or take recommended action based on the resultant information from the user. They're going to get a notification that says, hey, somebody's doing an access review on this group. Do you still require access? And if you want to auto apply the results, you simply click enable and then apply a response to what you would do if you don't get a response from the user. More organizations that are a little bit more security stringent are going to likely do a remove access or a no change. Now, under advanced settings, we can show the recommendations require reason on approval, mail notifications and reminders. The mail notification simply just does that. It sends emails to the reviewers when an access review starts and to the admins when it completes. That just lets you know what's going on. Of course, you can send reminder emails as well to confirm whether or not you've conducted and completed an access review as well. And if you need an approval, that's pretty self-explanatory. That just gives you a little text box in which case you can have a justification provided for that guest user. Once this is done, you'll hit start and you're pretty much good to go with regards to the access review because once that has been done, the guest in question is going to get the email based on the groups that you've specified. And just like that, you've conducted an access review inside of Azure AD. All right, next we're going to talk about those external collaboration settings. Now, we did this briefly in our first demonstration where we saw that in Azure AD, and if you've taken the MS100 course, you've seen this there as well. But when you go in to manage external users in Azure AD, it's important to note what the options are going to be available to you. So just as a quick overview of what we might have covered already on the MS100, and you might see it again on the MS700, external access collaboration settings can be inclusive or restrictive based on the domain in question. And there's some additional options that include things like guest users' permissions being limited, members or guests can invite, or enable email one-time passcodes for guests to be leveraged. Now, there are some restrictions around what you can do. Say, for example, allow invitations to be sent to a specific domain, which is a little bit more inclusive, or allow invitations only to a specified domain, kind of like a whitelist, and that's a little bit more restrictive. Or you can do something like the deny invitations to specified domains, which is what you're seeing in the screenshot on the right-hand side of this slide. If you want to learn more about the options within external access collaboration settings, click on the link below this slide to learn more. And ladies and gentlemen, just like that, we are four modules down within the course. 
Section one's a big one. There's seven modules all together, but stick with me. We're going to press forward. In module five, we're going to talk about managing security and compliance in teams, and it's going to be fun. Stick around, and uh, we'll see you in the next module.